Dear SQL DBA, I am completely confused about how to set max degree of parallelism for an OLTP workload. Having looked at three recommendations recently and applied it to my own machine, I get three different values. My machine has one physical CPU with four cores, four visible schedulers, and a hyperthreading ratio of four. However, I've got recommendations to set max stop to either one, two, or four. What should it be? Sincerely, max degree of confusion. Welcome to the Dear SQL DBA podcast. I'm Kendra Little, and Dear SQL DBA is a podcast for and about SQL Server database administrators. Today's question is fantastic, and max degree of confusion, I have some really great news for you. I actually have some really clear advice on what, if I were you, I would set max degree of parallel parallelism to for your workload. And my biggest challenge today is probably going to be saying parallelism properly. I also am gonna make a recommendation for you to set a second configuration item for your server, which is cost threshold for parallelism. And I'll explain what I would set them to and why. And the better news for you, Max Degree of Confusion, is actually that this question is harder for some of our other listeners who have more cores in their SQL server. It turns out this issue of parallelism is actually even more complicated if you have hardware that has a bunch of cores in it. So the good news for you, max degree of confusion is, it could actually be even more confusing. So let's talk about how you figure all of this stuff out for your hardware, because folks who are listening will have different types of hardware and they're running different versions of SQL Server. We actually have a new feature in SQL Server that is in SQL Server 2014 SP2 and SQL Server 2016 called Automatic Soft Numa that may change the way that some folks who have a lot of cores in their SQL Server can figure their parallelism. So let's break this down and talk about these settings. So first off, what is max degree of parallelism or max stop? And then what is this other setting I'm talking about cost threshold for parallelism? When you run a query, SQL Server estimates how expensive it thinks that query is going to be before it ever gets started executing it. And it uses this fake costing unit for, let's call it estimated query bucks. So I think that this query is gonna be point 001 estimated query bucks. That's a really cheap query. Whereas if something looks like it's more work, it might have 100 estimated query bucks or 15,000 estimated query bucks. It can actually go quite high. There's the setting called cost threshold for parallelism. And that setting that you control is the bar for who qualifies to go parallel and who, who is so cheap that they're just gonna get one core no matter what. The default in SQL Server is a cost threshold of five estimated query bucks. If it's less than five estimated query bucks, you get one logical processor to run. If it's estimated at more, it may go parallel and I say may because not everything actually can be parallel. There are some things we can only do with just one core. The setting max degree of parallelism controls for those queries who do qualify to go parallel, they're above the cost threshold, how many logical processors do they get to use? That's what you configure when you set max degree of parallelism. So we actually wanna control both of these things because we don't want all of our queries going parallel. And when they do go parallel, we often, and you know, I say often because it's hard to say always, but we usually don't want a query who goes parallel to use all our cores. It's also true that it's not necessarily for a, it's not necessarily faster for a query to use all of the cores either. 
Microsoft has published a KB with guidance about Mac's degree of parallelism. And if you are driving and listening to this podcast, or if you're walking around hunting Pokemon listening to this podcast, don't worry about writing this down. Go to littlekendra.com slash Dear SQL DBA after the episode and click on a link to this episode. There will be a link to KB2806535. And in that KB, Microsoft says, when you're thinking about how to set max degree of parallelism for a SQL server, you need to first determine how many NUMA nodes your hardware has and how many logical processors are in each NUMA node. Now, you may not be familiar with the term NUMA node. That is totally okay. NUMA node, really, when you're thinking about this, what you want to know is, okay, well, how many physical processors does my server have? Modern hardware ships with each physical CPU nestled up and snuggled up next to chips of memory, chips of RAM. And the physical CPU and all of the logical processors in it can access the memory that is local to that processor really, really fast. So let's say I buy a server that has two physical CPUs in it, and each physical CPU has 10 cores in it. So I've got a total of 20 cores. Maybe I have hyper-threading enabled, but for the sake of simplicity, let's just say I don't have hyper-threading enabled, right? Each of those CPUs, you know, each of them has the, the 10 cores. Each of those 10 cores can, is, can get to the memory on its own local CPU really, really fast. And they can get to the memory on the other CPU as well. It just takes longer. But we really care about performance, right? So ideally, if we're going to have a query that uses multiple cores, ideally, we want it to use cores within the same physical CPU and use memory that's local to that same physical CPU as well. SQL Server is aware of NUMA and it sees how many physical CPUs you have and how much memory is associated with each one and it really cares about it. So the KB, what it advocates is that you first figure out, okay, how many NUMA nodes do you have and how many logical processors are in each NUMA node? And you use that to go into a formula to at least give you some upper boundaries for where to set max degree of parallelism. So they say in this KB that eight is a little bit of a magic number. There is such a thing as magic. The guidance in the KB basically says, if you have eight or more logical processors in a NUMA node, Generally speaking, you will get the best performance by setting max stop at eight or lower. In other words, in the example I was just talking about where we had 10 logical processors in a single NUMA node, we wouldn't necessarily get the best performance at 10. And this has to do in part because of the overhead of pulling work. But if I have, you know, split up work among 10 logical processors, I've got to put it back together at some point. And it is more work to put together work from 10 things, but also there's just some scalability limits that they've reached and they've said, they, they say in the article, there are exceptions. There are cases where going over eight is faster, but in general, we have observed that the sweet spot is at eight or lower when you have eight or more logical processors in a single NUMA node. And I did say, or lower, right? This isn't saying that eight is necessarily the best. In fact, four might be the best or six might be the best. That is in part because the KB and Microsoft and me for that matter, we can't know how many things are trying to use those cores at the same time on your workload because this varies all over the place, right? Are there tons, you know, is there, 30,000 batch requests per sec running? Or are there two batch requests per sec running? Different workloads will have different sweet spots for where things get faster. Now the guidance for servers with fewer logical processors says, okay, if you have less than eight logical processors in your NUMA node, generally you'll get the best performance 
at setting your max stop to the number of logical processors or lower. In other words, back with max degree of confusion, there's one NUMA node, it has four logical processors, we would want to set max degree of parallelism to four or lower. And I'll talk about how we decide between those lower ones there, but we, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't generally want to set it higher there. So this magic number of eight, it's, it's magic may be a little diluted because of new features in SQL Server. So in SQL Server 2014 Service Pack 2 and SQL Server 2016, there is a feature called Automatic Soft NUMA. SQL Server is keeping up with hardware advances. Hardware manufacturers are starting to put more and more cores in their processors. And because of these scalability limits, the folks who make SQL Server said, I think there's a, a, some cool things we can do to handle this. And in SQL 2014 SP2 and SQL Server 2016, when SQL starts up, it looks at all of the processors available. And if you have more than eight logical processors in a NUMA node, it will automatically configure soft NUMA. And it will do it dynamically based on the number of NUMA nodes you have and the number of logical processors you have and split them into these little soft NUMA groups. You can see a message in the SQL Server error log saying it happened. So it's not like there's no way for you to know. So check your startup log and you can tell if this has happened. There is a fantastic post by Bob Dorr who works at Microsoft and he has a, a blog post called SQL Server 2016, it just runs faster, automatic soft NUMA. And this is on a blog, which I, I it's a Microsoft blog called SQL Server According to Bob, which I, I love that, <laughs> I love that blog title. I love it. There's, there's two people named Blo Bob who are very smart, who blog the, the blogging Bobs at that site. Now in this post, Bob Dorr gives an example of a workload on SQL Server 2016 where they got a 30% gain in query performance by using soft NUMA. And he mentions that they had max degree of parallelism set to the number of physical cores in a socket in that case. And the number of physical cores was 12. So for that workload, they actually did get better performance with those soft NUMA groups by using a max stop that was the number of physical cores that, and the, the NUMA groups were smaller um, than the max stop. Because when I first read this post, I was like, huh, I wonder if you have to figure out the size of the NUMA group and set the max stop to that. Not necessarily. They had a max stop set at 12, which I think is really fascinating and exciting. There are other things about soft NUMA that help scale. Check out Bob's post uh, to see some of the magic going on behind the scenes. So what does this mean? For, for SQL Server 2014 Service Pack 2 and SQL Server 2016, for those of you guys who do have a lot of cores per socket, I do think that starting at the magic number eight, when you're starting your testing, that's still a good value to start testing at. But do look at whether soft NUMA is being configured and do test other values. If you really care about performance, you can't just go with a starter default value for your workload. You need a repeatable benchmark and you need to be able to run that benchmark with different settings and measure the performance. And you need to do this on the same hardware as production, right? This is one of the reasons that when performance is really important, people don't just buy one really nice server, right? Because when SQL Server starts up, it looks at the exact server configuration and the performance that we're gonna get is gonna be really dependent upon having the same you know, hardware as we have in production. So people who really care about performance really need a good environment to benchmark and to fine tune down to the right number. So let's go back to our case that's simpler because the good news for max degree of confusion is with four logical processors, you don't gotta worry about this soft NUMA, 
right? So maybe by comparison, your life does seem a little easier now. We know that there's one physical CPU, there's one NUMA node on max degree of confusion server. And based on the KB, we know that we want to use max stop of four or lower. It's an OLTP workload. We got that info from the question. So in other words, we would expect that there's lots of little inserts, updates, and deletes, and a lot of read queries that are fast as well. But on modern SQL servers, we kind of have to assume that sometimes larger queries run as well, that count all the recent sales or look at a lot of rows, right? Modern workloads, it's really rare for it to be like an OLTP benchmark in real life. So we have to think about the fact that if we do set max stop to four, if we say that when a query goes parallel, it can use all of our cores, that could be real trouble. What if we have three queries running at once going parallel and they're shuffling on and off those, you know, four cores and we've got little reads and writes running at the same time. That, so four, four does not seem like a good idea. Letting anyone who goes parallel use all our CPUs seems like bad news for OLTP, right? So I wouldn't go to four. The other extreme is to say, nobody gets to go parallel. That's choosing max stop one. That extreme is also not very attractive in this case because, well, some queries will need parallelism to go a little bit faster and they would benefit from some parallelism. But if we set the server level setting at max stop one, we're saying nobody gets to ever do that unless they have a max stop query hint, like actually in the T-SQL saying override the server setting. So the middle ground of max stop two is the real value I would default to in this case saying, if a query really needs to go parallel, then it can use two of the cores because I just don't want, you know, two parallel or three parallel queries to be sharing all four cores at once. But I would also go back to that other setting of cost threshold for parallelism and say, Okay, if you, if you need parallelism, you can use two of my logical processors, but you, I need to raise the bar a little bit. Not just every cheap query can go parallel because the default value of cost threshold for parallelism of five SQL Server says, oh, it, a query only has to be five query bucks or more to qualify for parallelism. That is really low these days and I want to raise the bar. I would raise the bar to 50. I have been setting cost threshold for parallelism to 50 since SQL Server 2005 came out. So I am very, very comfortable with 50 as a default value for this. A, a query with an estimated cost of 50 is not a particularly large query. I've looked at a lot of queries and a lot of query costs. So of course there are exceptions to this. There are um, cases where I've been fine tuning a server and I have lowered the cost threshold from 50. There are cases where I've been fine tuning a server and I've raised it. But generally I have found that 50 is a good starting point. It is a good general magic number. Just like that magic number of eight, there are always going to be exceptions, right? So I think for me, for max degree of confusion, I would start with Max degree of parallelism equals two, cost threshold for parallelism equals 50. Now, quick disclaimer, this doesn't mean that I would never set max degree of parallelism to one. You always wanna look at the applications that are using the SQL server and look at the install instructions and talk to the developers. Sometimes an application is designed to run with a very specific configuration, like no parallelism at all. For example, SharePoint is designed for to run always with max stop one and not use parallelism. So when that's in the install instructions, you absolutely want to follow it. These default values that I'm talking about are for when you, the DBA, gets to figure out what's the, the best starter values to go with. Thank you for joining me this week for Dear SQL DBA. I'll see you again next week.